Hello everyone. Happy Tuesday. It's time for another episode of Tuesday Live at 5. This is Lena Garissa. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. And today I am so excited and a little bit sad to share with you a retiring stamp set called Game On. Now this stamp set is one that I actually purchased way back last June when the then new annual catalog went live and it's been sitting on my shelf unloved ever since. Now how sad is that? Poor unloved stamps. It's just one of those things. I bought it with every intention of using it. I loved it. And then the holiday catalog came out and then school started and I have just been so crazy busy. So when the retirement list came out last week, I was very sad to see this stamp set on it and decided that I had better show it some love before it went away forever. So today I'm all about the Game On stamp set and a whole bunch of other retiring products. I decided it's time to use them before I lose them. So that is kind of the theme of the next few weeks. We're going to be all about using retiring products and using up things that are going away soon. Now, before we get to today's projects, I did want to mention I got my copy of the new annual catalog. It came yesterday. Um, I'm very excited about it. It is fabulous. So many awesome products. Now, if you are in Canada and you do not currently have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you would like a free copy of this catalog, you need to make sure you complete my uh, Google form. Okay, I will post it right after this video. I will pin it to the top of my page so that you can find it and you can order your copy. Now, I have to say, if you have received a catalog from me before, I'm going to ask you to do the form again. Um, I don't save them from one catalog to the next. So it's just quick. It's just your name and your address, and uh, I will get these out. I'm ordering them on, t on Thursday when our pre-order goes live for demonstrators, and my hope is to get them off the week of our rescheduled March break, which is April 12th, assuming they get here in time. <laughs> in any case, they should hopefully get to you before the catalog launches on May the 4th, okay? So that is our beautiful, I can't show you the inside, but look at how pretty that cover is. Oh, cannot wait. All right. So let me pull up my video here so I can see who's joining me. And then we are going to flip the camera and get to some stamping. You guys ready? All right. Look away for a second while I flip the camera and then I'll let you know when we're good to go. All right. I think we're good. We'll just get this centered. There we are. There is our game on stamp set. Now this stamp set, as I mentioned, is one that I ordered a sadly long time ago and only this weekend inked up for the first time. It is so fun and perfect for making man cards. So this week we are all about man cards, making cards for the men in our lives, because a lot of times people seem to have trouble with that. So I am going to show you three designs today. I'm going to post a bunch more that I made um, throughout the week on my Instagram. So you'll want to make sure you're following me on Instagram and we're gonna get to it. So I'm gonna set this aside. I'm just gonna see who's watching today. Let's see who's here. We've got Gail and Debbie and Deb and Jill and Krista, Louise. Hi, Julie. Hi, Sue. All right, Julie. Oh, you bought this set a month ago too. All right, well, hopefully I give you some ideas. So first card we're gonna make is this one. Super simple. I wanted to start out really simply and feature a couple more retiring products that are some of my favorites. I don't know, I'm really being hit hard this retirement round because some of my very favorite go-to products are retiring. So um, I gotta use them while I can. So this is our first project. We are going to start, let's pull out some bits here. Our background paper is um, just basic white. It's cut to four by five and a quarter. And then I've embossed it using the subtle embossing folding. I'm not sure how well that's going to show up on the camera, but it's just a really um, subtle sort of linen look. And it is one of my favorite folders for just adding a touch of texture to my backgrounds. And of course, it's retiring. So that is our background, four by five and a quarter inches. And then we have a piece of True Love Designer Series paper. Now, thankfully, this is in the January to June mini, so it's still around for a few more months. Um, it's got those gorgeous florals on the back and then fun, just black and white geometric patterns on the other side. Now, this is cut to two and a half, two and a half by four. Okay. Then we have some Poppy Parade cardstock. And this is two and five eighths by four. So you're going to see when we layer this, we're going to have just a narrow little border above and below. So let's go ahead and do that first. Hi, Gail from Oakville. Hello, Janice. How are you? 
So we'll just pop this on. We're going to have our left and right sides aligned. They're going to be flush, and then we're going to have a narrow little border at the top and bottom. There we go, just like that. Okay, and then this is going to get layered onto my background panel, my embossed basic white cardstock. It's going to go on about a half inch up from the bottom. Uh oh, oh no, seal emergency. Good thing I just refilled another one. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. Where'd my piece go? All right, let's add a little bit of adhesive to the back of our Poppy Parade. And again, this is gonna go on about a half inch, maybe a touch more um, up from the bottom. Maybe we'll go about there. Uh-oh, my paper's a teensy bit wider than my DSP, so we're gonna trim that. Whenever I'm trimming these little, little teeny tiny narrow cuts, I like to use my little mini guillotine trimmer. This was a promotion during celebration last year for new demonstrators. And I love this thing, I use it all the time. There we go, that's gonna clean up that edge and give me a nice clean finish there. Alrighty, next we have a stitched label. This is another product that is retiring. Now, if you watch my videos, you see me use these a ton. I love the shape. Um, there are a ton of different sizes and they're awesome, awesome dies. If you don't have these yet, get them before they're gone. I'm telling you, you won't regret it. All right, so we're gonna stamp our chess pieces in Memento Black. So I'm just gonna ink this up. Make sure we are well inked. And we're gonna stamp it a little bit towards the left. So not quite centered because we're gonna cut off actually part of the point here. So we'll put this away. And then I'm gonna bring back my little mini trimmer here. Hello Antoinette, how are you? So I'm gonna trim up, I'm putting my point in so that it's at the three inch mark. So I don't even know how much that is that I'm trimming off. I'm trimming off a bit, okay? And it's going to go on just like that. Now before I do that, I need to add some twine. So this is Playful Pets twine. So it's from the Playful Pets suite, also retiring. You're gonna hear that <laughs> as a running theme today. Um, so many awesome products retiring. I hope you got your retiring products order in. They are all now while supplies last. So once they sell out, they are gone. All right, so just be warned that uh, if you wait, you may not be able to get your hands on the things that you are looking for. So we're gonna just trim that excess off and wrap our twine around the back, okay? And then we're going to add our chest pieces. Now our chest pieces are gonna get popped up, okay? So we're gonna add some mini dimensionals along the bottom because it's gonna run right below or the, the mini dimensionals are gonna run right below where our twine goes. And then we're gonna add a couple of larger dimensionals to the point and across the top, and then one in the middle. So we'll get rid of our backings. I know, Louise, I can't believe the stitch shapes are retiring and the, sti the, the stitch shapes and stitch nested labels. Both of them are, again, my go-to dies. And I don't know, I'm gonna be lost without them. I honestly don't know how I'm gonna function without those, those dies. All right, so next we are going to go ahead and glue this onto our card base. So our card base is basic gray cardstock. It's eight and a half by five and a half, scored in the middle at four and a quarter. So we'll just fold that in half along our score line and burnish it a little bit with our bone folder. And then we're going to add, whoops, going to add a little bit of adhesive to the back of our embossed panel. Now you want to go a little bit slowly when you are applying seal to emboss cardstock because it will pull up the cardstock because cardstock has been weakened by the embossing. So you just want to make sure that you don't go too quickly. Okay, so there is our um, card front. Now I have some little chest pieces. So I pre I fussy cut these out ahead of time. I just stamped them on some scrap um, basic white cardstock, just like I did on this. And then I just took my paper snips and cut them out. And I thought it would be kind of fun to pop them up and give a little bit of dimension to this card. So we're just gonna add a couple of dimensionals to the back of each one. Hello, Helen, how are you? 
Better late than never, right? So I'm just adding a couple of mini dimensionals to the back of each one of my little chest pieces here. And I'm layering them right over top of the stamped images on my label. Okay, and that's gonna give them a little bit of a 3D pop. It's a fun little technique um, to add a little bit of interest to your cards. So again, we'll just pop that guy up. There we go. Can you see that? Just adds a nice little bit of interest. All right, the last thing we need to do is fussy cut our sentiment. So I've already gone ahead and stamped and heat embossed um, the sentiment in white embossing powder um, on Poppy Parade cardstock. Okay, so we are just going to take and fussy cut this out. Now, this is not meant to be anything fancy. We're just going to cut straight lines. Okay, fussy cutting sentiments does not have to be scary. <laughs> I'm just cutting straight lines above and below and on either end. And then I'm just going to cut like a little step down here to clean that up. So it's not difficult. We're just cutting straight lines, okay? And they don't even have to be perfectly straight. So for those of you who are worried or nervous about fussy cutting, um, don't be. Just, the more you do it, the better you get at it. Um, this fussy cut sentiment look is very, very big right now. All right, so there is my sentiment. It is going to go on right about here. Now I'm gonna put a dimensional under this side where it sort of hangs off the label. And then I'm just gonna put a little bit of tape here where it overlaps, because this label is already popped. So again, I gotta make sure I put it on the right end. So we're gonna put a dimensional here, and just a little smidgy of tape. And then we're gonna pop that on, hopefully straight. And it just adds a nice little fun pop of color. Okay, really, really simple card. Um, but this st stamp set is great for that, right? And a perfect masculine card. Now we need to add our bow. I almost forgot. How could I forget my bow? So I'm going to make my twine bow where I make one loop. I have a tail hanging off to the left. I'm just going to take that loop, wrap it around, and bring it through. So I don't actually tie a knot. All right. With this, this twine's a little bit heavier, and you don't want a big bulky knot. The knot is bulky enough because the twine is fairly thick. So we're just gonna trim that off and add a glue dot to the knot of our bow. And then we're just gonna pop that on right where the twine and the label meet right there. Just like that. Cute, right? All right, simple, simple. Now we're gonna step it up and, oh, I should probably show you. On the inside of my sample, I added a uh, basic white layer and stamped some, some of the checkerboard um, image in there, okay? All right, so that is number one, super simple. Number two is this one. Now this is one I posted earlier today. Um, it's got lots of shimmer and shine, thanks to the brass foil sheets. Now this, um, this has tons, <laughs> it has a lot of retiring product on it as well. Um, so let me talk about what, what we're doing here. So to start, I'm gonna talk about um, the DSP. So this is actually some more of that um, true love DSP that this side actually hurts. This image hurts my eyes to look at. It was, it's just plain black and white and it actually like makes my eyes go buggy. So I had never used it. I'd used lots of the floral side, but I hadn't used any of this sort of diamond pattern. So I thought, well, how can we tone down the crazy busyness of the pattern? I thought by adding color, would uh, be the way to do it. So that's exactly what I did. So I colored the little squares on the inside. So these little inside guys, I colored in the light Pretty Peacock Stampin' Blends. Then the next square out, I used the dark Pretty Peacock. And then the next one out, I used light Basic Black. Okay, and then I left the space in between because that gives a nice negative to make those squares pop. I didn't bother coloring this part because it's gonna get co covered by our focal image. Okay, so this piece started out, it's four by five and a quarter, and again, it started out just as black and white, and I had some great fun this weekend coloring, a little color therapy. It's always relaxing, I find, especially when I've had a stressful week at work. <laughs> so next we have um, some of the beautiful brass foil sheets. Now I have to say, I was 
kind of shocked and very sad to see these re retiring. Um, the brass foil sheets were new in this catalog and I love them. They're just so bold and bright, um, but sadly they're on their way out. Now I should also mention that I embossed this using the detailed diamonds embossing folder. So that's another one that is retiring. I wanted to play up the diamond pattern. There's kind of a theme here, right? Diamonds, diamonds, diamond. And I thought it kind of reflected the shape of the dice. So I used the dainty diamonds on my brass foil. Okay. It just gives it such a gorgeous shimmer and shine. And then I have a piece of basic black cardstock that has been die cut using another retiring product. And this is the one that I will mourn forever and ever. The stitched shapes dies. Um, I, you've, I probably use them in every single video I've ever done. Like I'm not even exaggerating. I love those dies. And uh, when I saw that they were tiring, I had to stop and take a moment because um, I honestly don't know how I'm gonna make out without them. So um, you're gonna see a lot of them over the coming weeks before they go away forever. And uh, so this is the second largest square from the ship sta stitched shapes dies. Um, die cut from basic black cardstock. And then I took again and heat embossed in white some of the dye images. Okay, so I'm, I did a little bit of a chalkboard technique. You may have seen this technique before. So I, I heat embossed in white and then I'm gonna bring in my white craft ink and a sponge dauber and I'm just gonna come in around the edges and just sponge all the way around to kind of soften the edges and it gives it sort of a chalkboard smudgy effect for lack of a better word. <laughs> now I have to say I no longer have chalkboards in my classroom which I am quite glad of because chalk is actually very messy and very dusty um, but I did for a long long time so I'm very familiar with the look of a chalkboard and that is pretty accurate. <laughs> Okay, so that is all there is to that. So what we are going to do is actually adhere our um, chalkboard square to our foil sheets. And we're gonna adhere it so that the edge of our foil lines up sort of with the points on our square, just like that. So the easiest way to do that is with it turned upside down. So I just need to remember which way I want my um, square to go. And then I'm just gonna take and line it up so that my points line up pretty much with the edge of my foil, okay? And then that is going to get stuck down onto my DSP, just like that, okay? All right, thanks, Sue. You like the coloring? Yeah, I have to say, like, the coloring just makes all the difference for the pattern on this DSP. It totally tones it down, and I actually really, really like the pattern now. I really hated it before. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and adhere our foil piece to our DSP. And again, I always like to use my grid paper to help me get my pieces straight. So we're just gonna line up the right edge of the foil with the right edge of our DSP, just like that, okay? Now, before we do anything else, we're gonna go ahead and glue that down onto our basic black card base. So same dimensions as the last card, it's eight and a half by five and a half, scored in the middle at four and a quarter. So we'll just fold that in half. And again, give it a good burnish. Hi, Brenda, you joined me live this week. Nice to see you. So we're gonna add a little bit of adhesive to the back here. And we're going to pop this on just about there. Okay. All right. Next, we have just a little scrap of white cardstock. And I have here the sentiment that says, it's your day, roll with it. So I didn't really want to take up as much space. I didn't want to have the, the longer sentiment. I wanted to have something for the inside of my card. So I'm just going to use part of the sentiment on the front and then the rest of it on the inside. Okay, so to do that, the easiest way to ink part of a stamp is to use a stamp and write marker. So I'm using my basic black. Now we sell the basic black stamp and write marker, marker all by itself. Okay, all of the other markers are sold in color family sets, but this one, black is special. Um, it's sold on its own. So I'm using the brush tip, just like our blends. They have dual tips. There's a writing tip and a brush tip. So I'm using the side of my brush tip and I'm just going to very carefully, and I just got some ink on the R and roll. So let's just get rid of that. 
and we'll touch this up. So I'm just going to ink up It's Your Day, okay? And I'm just going to stamp it on my scrap of cardstock. And then I'm going to bring in yet another retiring product, the Classic Label Punch. This is another one that I use a ton. I love it. So we are going to punch this out. And I'm going to punch it so that my sentiment is towards the right end of the label. Just like that. So we'll set that aside. And then we are going to stamp some dice. So I have here my dice image and I'm going to ink it up with some black ink. You can use whatever black you have. I just tend to use memento. It's kind of my go-to. Um, we'll stamp that on our white cardstock. And then I'm just gonna fussy cut these out. Now dice are about the easiest thing there ever could be to fussy cut because you're just cutting straight lines, right? <laughs> so you're just literally cutting straight lines all the way around your dice. There's no curved lines, there's no tricky detail. It's just straight, 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 and straight, which makes it really, really straightforward. Ha, huh? pardon the pun. Get it? Straight, forward? Huh. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I am a little tired this week. I'm ready for Easter break. Let me tell you, I and all of my teaching colleagues are quite ready and really hoping that they don't cancel our rescheduled March break, which is coming up in a couple weeks. All right, so there are my dice. Got them all cut out. I'm just gonna turn this a little bit closer. I left a little bit too much of a gap there. There we go. And we are going to adhere that to the end of our label. Now you're gonna see that there's a little bit peeking out here. So I'm gonna trim a little bit off of my label here. And then we're gonna go ahead and stick this on just like that to the end of our label okay so easiest done with a glue dot as soon as i figure out where they are so we'll pop a glue dot on there and just adhere our dice like that all right then we're gonna add a little pop of gold so i have here another retiring product the forever gold um or forever yes forever greenery gold cord okay so this is from the forever greenery trim pack um, this is, again, one of my go-to products. You've seen me use it a ton. Love it. And I'm very sad that it's going away. So, once again, we're going to use it a bunch in the next few weeks. So, I've just gone ahead and put some um, adhesive down on the back of my dice. And then I'm just going to kind of loop my cord around and just kind of press it in to the adhesive as I go two and we'll do one more sorry i'm going off camera i keep pulling things closer towards me and I, then i forget that you guys can't see it better you guys can see than me right <laughs> all right so we're going to trim that off so you see how we just have it's just like little loops behind our oopsie that one's stuck where i did not want it to let's just pull that out so we can see our third loop there we go Okay, so we have our three little loops and then I'm gonna fray the ends because I love that frayed look. And then this is gonna get put onto the front of our card with a couple more mini dimensionals. So we'll just grab a couple more. And we're gonna go one and two and one right there and one at the end, okay? And we'll get rid of our backings. And then that is going to pop on centered on our little diamond here. So just nice and straight. And I kind of lined up my points on my, with my label and my diamond, just that I know it's nice and straight. And we'll just give that a little floof. There we go. You like that one? Now again, on the inside, I'm not gonna take the time to do it now, but on the inside, I added another white panel, stamped the dice again, and then I inked the rest of that sentiment stamp for the inside. So I used my black marker for with it and I um, inked the roll with my pretty peacock marker just to kind of bring out the roll with it because I thought that was a bit of a pun with the dice. Okay. All right. So there is a fun man car that's still got a bit of bling. So it satisfies the, the bling lovers among us, <laughs> myself included. All right. Our last one has a little bit of a cowboy twist. I was putting this together and I just couldn't resist going for, you know, Texas Hold'em, Saloons and The Gambler, Kenny Rogers, that whole kind of vibe. Um, I was just playing around with the cards and that's what it made me think of. So um, again, lots of retired product on this one. So let's get to it. We're going to start, let me just pull out 
I've got all of my ribbon and whatnot in here too. So it's a little bit tight. All right, we're going to start with our um, focal image. So I have a stitched a stitched oval so again from the stitch shapes dies this is the largest oval it's die cut from crumb cake cardstock and I've got my straight what is this a straight flush royal flush royal flush that's what that is <laughs> I don't know my poker hands I'm not a poker player I think it's a royal flush um so I have my deck of cards or my my hand of cards here I'm gonna ink it up in black Again, and I love these images because they're a little bit, um, they're just sort of faded and sort of worn, which I, I love because it just adds a little bit of authenticity to the look. Okay. And we are going to distress our oval a little bit. So I have not done sort of distressing and aging vintage in a long time in a video. So I'm going to show you one of many ways to distress um, a uh, piece of cardstock. So you can see the difference. This is the one I just stamped. This is the one I have on my card. So I'm going to show you how to go from this to this. Okay. So I have, I'm going to start with crumb cake ink and my sponge dauber. And I'm going to come on and just sponge all the way around the edges with my crumb cake. Now I'm going to come on fairly far. Can you see I'm not just doing the edges. I'm coming um, past the stitching because I want this to look like it's sort of worn and aged. So I'm just gonna come all the way around. It may smudge my stamped image a little bit. That's okay. We actually want that look. That actually adds some authentic authenticity to the vintage vibe we got going here. So we're just gonna come all the way around and ink that up. Okay, so already it looks like it's kind of been handled for years by grimy hands, <laughs> which is kind of what you want, all right? Then we're gonna come back in with some soft suede ink. And we're going to do the same thing, but this time I'm not gonna come on quite as far. So that's just gonna darken down. I'm just kind of inking up to the stitching all the way around. That's gonna darken down the border and just really make this pop. We're just gonna come all the way around. Now I will say doing this, this sort of flicking action with your daubers will wear your daubers faster, okay? You'll find that they will wear out faster doing this, but sometimes it's worth it, right? When you get a cool look like that. All right, so there is our distressed focal image. Then we have here some, what's this one? Uh, it's the world, the world something. Come on, Louise, help me out. This DSP, also retiring. It's got the gorgeous brass metallic on it. Um, and then I have some more brass foil sheets and that I have embossed it with the tin tile embossing folder. Another embossing folder. Again, all of these gorgeous folders retiring. Um, so this piece is cut to one and three quarters by five and a quarter. This DSP piece is four by five and a quarter. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and layer our embossed foil on the front of our DSP. So we'll go ahead and add a little bit of adhesive. And this is going to go on about three squares, one, two, three squares up from the bottom. It's about three quarters of an inch. Let's just make sure that's nice and straight. Okay, then we are going to layer that now. <laughs> I know some of you are going to cringe because um, I'm actually using some brass foil as a mat behind this. And I know some of you are going, how could she possibly cover up all that gorgeous brass foil? So here's what you do. You die cut shapes out of this, okay, before you use it as a mat. I'm not gonna take the time to do that. I have a ton of brass foil, it's retiring. I'm just using it willy nilly, I don't care. Um, but if you have brass foil and you are die cutting, die cut your shapes, okay, and then use the negative for mats behind your, um, your card fronts, okay? So we're going to go ahead and layer that. Just look away if it bothers you that I'm covering up all that foil. <laughs> I know some of you will be very bothered by that. Now the challenge when you are layering on foil is there's, it's quite reflective, right? So it can be a little bit tricky to get things straight but I think I did an okay job. 
All right, now we're gonna layer that on a piece of cinnamon cider cardstock. So this is um, one of our ink colors that is not retiring, okay? It's good for another year. Uh, love the soft brown. It's also featured in this DSP pack. It's cut to five and a half by eight and a half. So again, all of our um, card bases today are the same dimensions, half a sheet of cardstock, and it is scored at four and a quarter inches. So we'll fold in half and crisp that up. And this time we're doing a horizontal or landscape oriented card. So we're gonna go ahead and glue our card front on. So again, add a little bit of tape. And we're gonna pop that on just like that. Okay, and I love the way the cinnamon cider looks with the brass foil. It just, oh, makes me happy. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and glue on our focal image. All right, we're gonna pop that up with a couple of dimensionals. So we'll get our full size ones out and we'll add a couple of those. Get rid of our backing. Hello, Wendy Roy. How are you? Hi, Claire. How are you doing? All right. So we're going to go ahead and adhere that right about there. Okay. World of good. Thank you, Louise. Yes. This DSP is on sale. That is right. Thank you for mentioning that. All right, um, our sentiment is another um, one from the Game On set. Holy cow, momentary brain fart there. Totally forgot the name of the stamps that I'm featuring. <laughs> wow, do I need a vacation. Um, stamped again and heat embossed in white on basic black cardstock. Okay, and then die cut using the stitched rectangles, which hallelujah are not retiring. <laughs> if they were going to, I think I might just have to end it all. It would not be good. So we are going to do the same kind of distressing technique or chalkboard technique that we did on the first card. So again, I'm just gonna take a little bit, ooh, that was maybe a little bit too much. We'll get rid of some of that ink on there uh, and just kind of come around. And again, I want it to look kind of smudgy and chalkboardy. Kind of reminds me of a sign in a saloon. That's what I was kind of going for, like that cowboy Wild West vibe. All right, so there is our chalkboard sign. And that is going to get adhered here. Now, before we do that, we're going to do this uh, trim treatment, but it's not actually a bow. It looks like a bow, but because this is quite bulky, uh, when I tie in a bow with it, I end up with quite a bulky knot, which actually causes this corner of my label to lift up. So we're going to form a bow, but we're not actually going to tie it. All right. So I'm going to start by putting a glue dot in that bottom right corner of my label. And then I'm going to take, and this again, another retiring product, another favorite go-to of mine, the 1 8 braided linen trim. Honestly, Stampin' Up! is just killing me this time. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to handle all of these, new pro these products going away. It's a good thing there's lots of good stuff in the new catalog. I'm sure I will forget all about all these products that are retiring as soon as I get my hands on the new stuff. So I'm basically just forming the loops of the bow. Okay, I'm not actually tying it. And I'm going to just sort of press that against the glue dot that I put on. So I'm just going to kind of put that right there. Okay, so it looks like the loops of the bow, but it's not actually tied. Now I'm going to have to add another glue dot here to hold my ribbon in place. Or my trim, it's not really ribbon. So let's just put another one right there and just overlap that like that. Okay, so this is a neat little trick for um, creating that look. This look is very popular right now where the, the bow is sort of tucked behind the label rather than on top of it. And uh, when you're using this trim, it can be a little bit bulky. So that's just one way to get that look without the bulk. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and adhere that to the front of our card. We're going to use a couple of dimensionals. Now, again, the spot that's going to overlap my uh, focal image, I'm going to add some tape, put some dimensionals over here. So we'll put one here. I'm actually going to use the dimensional to push my twine down a little bit there. You just bought two. Of course you did. Well, you have a good supply for when I, you know, am in, in, am in desperate need. Louise, I know who to call. <laughs> All right. So we're going to pop this on. Hopefully straight right about there. Okay. We'll press that into place. I'm going to distress the ends of my sort of faux bow here just because I can and because I like that look. 
again, sort of lending to that Wild West vibe. And then the last touch is to add some of these antique corners. So this is again, retiring product. Are you sensing the theme? <laughs> these are a part of the same suite as the DSP. And I'm going to add um, one of these little corner photo corners. They're antique brass, so they work really well with the vibe that I have going here. So we're going to put one in the upper right and one in the bottom left. And the easiest way to put these on is just with the glue dot. You can certainly use liquid glue as well. Um, but the glue dots are plenty strong to hold them on. Okay, and there we go. How's that for a Wild West card? You like that one? Again, all I could think of when I was designing this, I'm like, had the, the Kenny Rogers the Gambler going in my mind playing. So, um, but lots of fun. All right, so there we go. One, two, and three fun cards. Easy, fairly quick masculine cards with the Game On stamp set. Now, again, you're going to want to check out my um, either my Facebook page or my Instagram feed this week because I have lots more samples to share with you. And then I also um, need to remind you that Thursday is the last day to get in on my our Cross Border Crafters online class for this month, which features the Hydrangea Haven bundle. Okay, um, if you missed it, what I'm talking about the one that has three options. So you can choose to do the sampler, you can choose to do the five cards, or you can choose to do both. All right, so all the details for that is posted here on my Facebook page, so you can check that out. Um, there is a host code to use when ordering, and the last day to get in on this is Thursday. Okay? All right, everybody. Now, I need to tell you, next week, Tuesday, happens to be my one and only child's 14th birthday. So I am not going to be live on Tuesday of next week. I'll actually be live on Wednesday instead. Uh, we are planning a special evening for him on uh, the 6th, the Tuesday, which is his birthday. So I will not be live on Tuesday, but I will be live on Wednesday. So same time, just a day later. So I will see you next week for Wednesday, live at 5. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great week.